What's going on everybody? It's Royal YJ coming at you with a brand new video and today I'm bringing something a little bit different than what I typically do on my channel and that's going to be a test hand video. Now I don't really do test hands, I usually just do the deck profiles in like a separate combo tutorial or even just both in one if it's just one combo really. But I never really like sit down and do test hands on camera. I do test hands like I waste so many hours doing test hands off camera but like when it comes to actually recording them it's just not something I typically do. But I had quite a few requests to actually do a video on it for this deck in particular, that being Fire Brigade, of course, being the Fire King Tri Brigade variant. And seeing as I was kind of just out of video ideas already for the month other than exactly like Sleeper Sunday and a couple of replays, I decided I might as well take the plunge and actually try it out. I of course have my lovely Fire Brigade deck right here. I actually have a new build. It's much better and more like streamlined compared to that last clunky mess of a video I put out just because I was trying to get it out super fast. But before you get all excited and ask for the link to the deck profile, I'm not one to spill my secrets that easily. So let's say, let's set the bar a little higher than usual this time. If if this video hits 100 likes, I will record a separate deck profile, including all of my new updated choices for the list. With that being said though, let's go ahead and get right into my Fire Brigade test hands for February 2024 post Phantom Nightmare. Alright, I got the deck all nice and shuffled up, so let's go ahead and get our first test hand. So the first hand is going to consist of Kirin, Revolt, Barong, Island, and Nerval. So I'm not gonna lie, this hand overall isn't very great. It's like one of those one in a million hands where you draw your one ofs that you don't really wanna see. And when your best normal summon in your hand is Nerval, it usually doesn't end super well all the time. But because we have Island in hand, or we at least have a Beast Beast Warrior or Wing Beast that isn't Barong we can get rid of, it's really not that bad. So we're gonna start off with Fire King Island, activating it in our field spell zone and activating the effect to pop in order to search. I'm gonna go ahead and pop the Barong just in case we're able to search on the next turn. If we have to banish it, we have to banish it. No real big deal, really. But I'm going to use this opportunity to grab the Sacred Fire King Garunix. This is going to trigger the effect of Garunix because a fire was destroyed, so I'm going to special it from my hand to the side of the field, triggering the effect of Garunix in order to destroy a fire from our hand deck or field and gain the attack. So I'm actually just going to straight up pop a kit from the deck. This is the usual thing we're popping if we're not popping Barong anyway. Uh, but having the Nerval in hand means that it conflicts a little bit because we're already going to be dumping a Nerval off this kit. Speaking of, we're going to use the effect of kit in order to send the Tri Brigade Nerval from the deck to the grave. And then we're going to use Nerval in order to add a Tri Brigade Karis. Now the way we go about the rest of this hand is a bit like dependent because we already opened the Revolt, which is sometimes good, sometimes bad, because it means that going into Bear Brim is kind of just a quote-unquote neg overall, especially if you're going for a combo that uses Bear Brim's Pitch 2 effect. Yeah, you get that effect, but you don't get the full value, you know? But on the other hand, if you really want to, you could totally use, like, Farajit effect by going into something like an SP first to put the Revolt back so you can go into Bear Brim again later anyway. It's a bit weird and complicated, but it does work sometimes. But I think what I'm going to do from here is I'm going to Normal Summon the Tri Brigade Nerval, and activate the effect banishing the kit and Nerval in my grave to summon the Farajit to my extra monster zone. And now I'm thinking we're just going to use Farajit here to special the Karis. Technically this is a quote unquote waste of a Karis because we're not using its effect to special itself, but it's more so a precaution in case our opponent has hand traps. Not sure if I'm going to show like how to play through or around like different hand traps uh, in this video, if not just assuming the opponent has nothing, right? Uh, but I think from here, I'm actually going to take the Farajit, the Nerval, and the Garunix, and I'm going to turn them into an Appaloosa. And this is really good in case they have Nibiru, because this is actually on the fifth summon, I believe, so that's pretty damn cool. And let me go ahead and get a die out to show how many counters it has. Let me just place one of these Spellstone counter dies from TapioCards.com, uh, totally sponsored, so you should totally check that out. But see, this is where I mentioned where you can use the effect of Farajit here to draw one and put one back, and that includes the Revolt. So we're going to go ahead and draw, seeing another cure in there doesn't really matter. We're mainly just doing this to put back the Revolt on the bottom of our deck. Now we can use the effect of Karis, banishing the other Nerval, as well as the Farajit. We want to keep the Barong and the Grunix in grave if we can, of course. And we're going to summon our Bear Brum. And then finally, to wrap up this combo, we're going to take Karis and Bear Brum and link them off into SP, triggering the effect of Bear Brum, of course, to add the Revolt, and place one of the Kirins on the bottom of our deck. 
And this is pretty solid, not gonna lie. We have the three Appaloosa negates, meaning that if it's uh, if their opponent's playing like Fenrir, right, they have to crash the Fenrir, or they have to use the effect uh, prematurely in order to bait out an Apple negate. But honestly, it's kind of just best to just crash it. But on top of that, we also have the Little Knight, and we have the Revolt, which will get us more follow-up and a non-target banish. But speaking of follow-up, though, remember we still have a Barong that we popped. So in the standby phase, we can do something like add a Ponyx, just to get a little bit of extra follow-up. And that's really good because we also have the Kirin still in hand, which is honestly really nice. I mean, even if we didn't have the Kirin here, we'd just search it off the Barong, uh, and then use the uh, Kirin to pop like a kit or a fractal we search off Revolt. But because we already had the Kirin, we don't even need to do that. So we get the Ponyx that'll come back anyway after we pop it. Kirin will uh, trigger the Garunix. Garunix will summon back, pop another Kirin. Special back the Ponyx, get a search, get a pop. And we basically have like... One, two, three, four, five, like six disruptions and a bunch of follow up between the grave and hands. Considering we opened two soft garnets, this is really not bad at all. Moving on to our next test hand, let's go ahead and see. We, we drew the revolt again. Uh, triple tactics talent, Fire King Island, Fire King Sanctuary, and TD Crow. So, yeah, I was actually going to cut this hand from the video, but. I decided that honestly, I kind of want to talk about it because even some of like the better decks, no matter how good you build them, are going to end up bricking anyway. And technically, quote unquote, if our opponent does ash us and we talents draw into something good uh, after we try to use island, then I mean, that's still something. This is definitely one of the situations that a lot of Yugi tubers won't show you in a test hand video if it's not like live streamed or anything, is that decks do brick even if you're really confident in how streamlined they are. So mainly, all we can hope for is just to get something better next time. Okay, let's go ahead and move on to our next hand. This one starts with Tanky, Barong, Nerval, Nerval, and Kit. So a definitely mostly Tri-Brigade hand here, and it still access to kind of like any combo you really want mostly. Uh, preferably like the Karis Banish 4 combo, which is the bit of a glass cannon one, but it's a lot better this format than it has been before, because Imperm and Valor and cards like that have fallen off as cards. So to do that combo, we're going to start by activating our Tenki, of course, searching for our Tri-Brigade Fractal. To be fair, I don't know, this hand's a bit weird, so you can probably search something like an Arvada instead. And then uh, use your normal summon on like Kit or something or Nerval, and then get the Karis anyway. There's probably a bunch of different routes you could do, but the safest way to make sure you don't mess anything up is to go ahead and just go for the Fractal play here. Activating the Fractal, and we are in fact going to send our final copy of Nerval here. We don't need to send Kit because we already have access to the Kit in hand and we'd be wasting resources. Uh, but we're going to use the Nerval to add our Karis, and we're going to use our Karis effect, discarding the Kit to special himself from hand triggering the effect of Kit to send Fractal. From here, as I mentioned, we're going to use Karis' effect to banish a whopping four cards, always one of the biggest choke points in any Tri-Brigade variant when you're going for the Fractal plus Tri-Type combo here, which is essentially what this is, anytime Karis is banishing four for sure. But like I said, at least cards like Imperm and Valor and stuff right now aren't really super popular because of the Fire King decks and Labyrinth and stuff, but also mainly because we have stuff in hand we can at least go for because we haven't used our normal summon. And compared to a deck like Bird Up, Fire King can usually make better use of that than like any other Tri-Brigade variant other than like exactly Zoo, but Zoo kind of sucks right now. But let's go ahead and link our Shurig and our Karis into a Tri-Brigade Bear Brum, triggering the effect of Shurig to search for any level 4 or lower Beast Beast Warrior or Wing Beast. And that's the thing that I love so much about Tri-Brigade engines is that you can literally fetch kind of anything off of Shurig and use that to access your other engine. And then most of the time, the other engine can access the Tri-Brigade, such as Bird Up searching Nerval, Garunix popping Kit, etc, etc. Anyways, we're going to use the effect of Bear Brum here, pitching one Nerval and the Barong, because I want to use this Nerval as my Revolt fodder to put it back. And I'm going to use this to summon back probably just the kit, honestly, just to have a fire engrave. And we're going to use the effect of kit, banishing the other Nerval, and probably... It's kind of like a, a dependent thing, because if your opponent's playing Bistials or you're scared of Bistials, you probably just want to banish the Shurig. Uh, but also, you can use this for, like, an access code pop later. I don't know, though. I think I'm just going to go ahead and banish it here. Might as well. And I'm going to use that to summon Ferja, of course. This is going to allow me to use the effect of Ferja here to special the Ponix from hand triggering the effect of Ponyx in order to search for the Sanctuary. 
activating Sanctuary to place the Fire King Island. And if you've watched my combo video, honestly, this looks very, very familiar. This is basically just the exact combo I explained, just with actual cards in hand, as opposed to just, like, the two combo cards and then any three cards fill in with, like, triple attack and ash and stuff. So it's basically, like, a more realistic depiction of what you'd open. Anyways, we're gonna use the effect of Island to pop the Ponyx in order to search for Garunix. And this is going to trigger the effect of Garunix in order to special summon itself, and of course pop a card from Handacker Field. And this is where things get a little interesting, because this new build, I will say, has only dropped down to one copy of Barong, meaning that in this situation we can't actually go for Barong. So what we're going to do instead, is we're actually going to destroy a Kirin, triggering the effect of Kirin to special the Barong. After that, we're going to do the combo like the normal way, like we're supposed to. We're going to use the Kit and the Garunix in order to make a IP Mask Arena, because this will allow us to go into an SP, of course, on the opponent's turn. And we're going to use the Bear Room and the Fergit to go into an Appaloosa with a whopping two negates. Now, I was actually thinking about this earlier when I was uh, planning on making this video in case I opened a hand like this. If you want to, there are a few different ways you can commit to this board if you don't want to end on a Tunigate Appaloosa. Because as I mentioned, Fenrir is a pretty popular card, so if your opponent has a Fenrir, they're just easily going to be able to punch right over the Appa without even having to worry about its negate, unless you use a card like Revolt or you use a um, IP to go into SP. And speaking of Revolt, let me go ahead and search my Revolt here before I forget uh, off the Bear Brum. So if you'd like, you can actually turn the Farajit and the Bear Brum just straight up into an SP Little Knight. And then when you go ahead and go for your Kirin plays on your opponent's turn, instead of committing to a Garunix Eternity, you can use the IP to go into a 3 Neg Apo if you've already used the SP, of course, to get out of the extra monster zone. Like, there's a couple of different ways you can do it. I just think having the Apo early on is a lot more worth it in general, because, like, if they go for Fenrir, right, chances are they're probably just going to go for the punch instead of trying to use the effect. Uh, so you can probably just go start up a battle phase, banish the Fenrir with uh, the SP or with the Revolt more likely. And that will have wasted their battle phase as well as gotten rid of the Fenrir threat on board and kept your Apo safe. And that's just really important to me because I think having Apo for negates early on is just super, super crucial. Especially if they're not playing Fenrir or they don't open it, it's going to be very difficult for them to actually play through the Apo negates most of the time. Especially because you have the IP and the uh, Revolt to actually back it up. Speaking of the Kirin plays, by the way, I completely neglected to mention that the Barong is actually the card we're going to be popping off the Kirin. I was thinking of Arvada for a second there and that it gets destroyed during the end phase, but no. The plan is you're supposed to use the Kirin to special the Barong and then pop the Barong. That way, during the standby phase, you do get the effect of the Barong to search for the Kirin, and you will also get the mandatory effect of your Ponix because it was destroyed by the island. That way, you can get actually get access to your Garunix Eternity play on your opponent's turn. So the end board keeps getting stronger. I just keep forgetting to like put stuff on the end board. Uh, but yeah, this is basically like the strongest board that Fire Brigade makes is the uh, Karis Banish 4. It does take up your entire hand, but it has plenty of follow-up. And like I said, if the Karis gets hit, you at least have a couple of cards in hand. You can use it like normal summon if you open Ponix or something like that. And it's just very flexible in what you can do because Shurig's search effect is so diverse. So I want to get at least like five test hands in if you include that like faulty one. So let's go ahead and do a fourth one. Starting off with Sanctuary, Ash Blossom, Kirin, Nerval, and Sacred Garunix. I'm not gonna lie, this hand is pretty fire, no pun intended. We're gonna start off by using our Fire King Sanctuary to place the Fire King Island from our deck. That's like the, basically the first thing we wanna do while we go ahead and get our bearings on the rest of the hand, because there's a few different things you can do. We can start by like normal summoning a Nerval, linking into All Mirage, using the Nerval to search for like a Fractal or a Karis, and then we can utilize the uh, Fire King Island to pop All Mirage, trigger your Garunix, search for something like a Ponix, etc, etc. A few different things we can do there. We can also just use the Island to straight up pop the Ash or the Kirin in our hand to get like a Ponix off of there, and then trigger the Garunix. We could just straight up pop the Nerval, it doesn't trigger anything, but we can just normal summon the Ponix anyway and use the Nerval to search. But I really like the normal summon Nerval play because it does bait cards like Ash, so we can actually keep the Sanctuary in hand and we can just like hold off on the island for now and we can normal summon the nerval and then link the nerval into an all mirage and now i guess i'll show like how to actually play around a hand trap now uh because say your opponent ashes the nerval honestly it's not even the worst thing you can do as an opponent facing down the situation because if a tri brigade player normal summons nerval and links into all mirage it usually means the hand is pretty mediocre overall and so they might just ash the nerval here so you don't get the tri brigade search and that could be pretty big for them most of the time However, we do have access to a few other plays with our Fire King engine, allowing us to use the Sanctuary to place the island. And we can activate the island. I think we're going to destroy the Kirin here in order to search for Ponix. 
Now we can go Chainlink 1, Kirin, Chainlink 2, Garunix. I want to go Chainlink 1, Kirin so it doesn't get Ghost Belled, for example. And at least with the Kirin and Garunix, you can actually use them in the same chain as opposed to like Ponix and Garunix. Uh, so we can at least go Effect of Garunix 2 Special itself and Effect of Kirin 2 Specialty Ponix. Also, before I do anything else, you're probably wondering why I didn't just pop the Nerval, or pop the Almirage here that I summoned off the Nerval like I was going to. If I hadn't gotten Ash, I would totally do that. But the main reason is we're not going to have access to the Tri Brigade engine in this hand, and that means we're actually not restricted to only using Beast Beast Warriors and Wing Beast as Link material. So we can actually use the Almirage for something like an Appaloosa or like an SP Little Knight or something, which I think is pretty cool. But anyways, we're going to use the effects of both Ponix and Garunix, Chain Link 1, Chain Link 2. We're probably going to use Garunix to pop for a Barong, and we're going to use the Ponix to search for a Circle of the Fire Kings. And actually, this is a good reason why we do test hands, because I think I actually want to take this back. I want to, instead of popping the Barong, I want to pop a Tri Brigade kit. Ignore everything I said about not having access to your Tri Brigade line, because we actually will have it here. And we're going to use the kit to just send a Fractal to get some extra things engraved. Now here's why Circle of the Fire Kings is so good in this deck in particular, because you can literally use Circle targeting the Ponix and targeting something like your Tri Brigade kit, and then pop the Ponix to special the kit from Grave. This will allow you to go basically into your full engine here, utilizing kits to banish like the Fractal and the Nerval here, and we can of course summon our Bear Brum. Things get a little bit interesting here because you can't exactly go for like everything you really want, but you can go for a couple of different things. So the thing I'd probably end up doing is using the Garunix and the Bear Brum to go into an SP, triggering Bear Brum to add Revolt, setting the Revolt in passing. Very minimal end board, gets you the Ponix for follow-up at least, which is pretty cool. But considering your opponent used the Ash, they're not going to have like a bunch of cards in hand, they're going to still have like five, but SP Revolt should be enough to at least to keep you alive, especially with all Mirage to protect certain things. But what you could also do if you want to use a little bit more resources yourself, you can actually just straight up take all three of these and make a three negate Apo. And then of course use the revolt search here to get it uh, and then put the ash back. And so this is more disruptions overall. Like I said, it's just really dependent on the matchup if you think they'll die to Apo and they're not playing like Fenrir or something. But this is kind of like a pretty typical Tri Brigade end board anyway, being like the 3 Negate Apo in the Revolt. But we also have the Almirage to keep it safe from being destroyed by card effects, which is really good in the Mirror match because of cards like Kieran and stuff. But compared to a lot of other Tri Brigade builds, instead of just the Revolt follow up, we're also getting the Ponix here. And we have the Island for next turn and like the Sacred Garunix engrave and everything, which I think is pretty neat. Hey y'all, it's Future Aurora here, and this is another really good reason why we do test hands so we can look back on them because as I'm editing this video, I'm realizing that there's a lot more cool stuff you can do with this end board. For example, if you do pop the All Mirage, given that we know we will actually have access to our Tri Brigade engine, you can actually keep the other Kieran in your hand, and you can either use that to put back uh, for the Revolt, and you can also just keep the Ash in hand as an additional disruption. Or you can actually put the Ash back and keep the Kirin, and that'll actually allow you to, on top of the Apple Revolt or SP Revolt end board, also be able to go for your Garunix Eternity because you'll have that Ponix to pop, which is pretty huge and a massive upgrade to the already decent end board. That's one of the beautiful things about doing test hands with Tri Brigade builds is that you can literally flex it to do so many different things, and the Fire King engine really helps supplement that. That's all for me for now though, I hope you enjoy the final test hand. Alright y'all, one more test hand for the road, and this one's going to consist of Triple Tactics Talent, Tri Brigade Fractal, Ghost Bell and Haunted Mansion, another Triple Tactics Talent, and a Fire King Ponix. So this hand may look really simple overall, especially because it has so much non-engine in hand, but it's actually pretty fire. We have access to a pretty solid small combo overall that's actually only possible now because of SP's existence, so thank you SP for actually being useful specifically for Tri Brigade. But instead of that, we could play a little bit more dangerous, quote unquote, by going for the Ponix plus any Beast Beast Warrior or Wing Beast combo that's featured in my combo tutorial. And then we also have Triple Tactics Talent, which is really good because we do want to start with Fractal most of the time here. Uh, and starting with the Fractal and then getting hit by an Ash doesn't really matter when we have access to the triple tack. So let's just say that the Fractal does get hit by an Ash here. Again, another really popular Ash target against Tri Brigade variants, and a lot of the time it can end up killing a turn, especially if they're not playing like the Light Heart, for example. But because we have Triple Tactics talent here, we can draw two. If this other talent was a Beast Beast Warrior or Wing Beast of any kind, I'd actually use it to rip a card from the opponent's hand instead, because we'd have the full Ponix and Beast Beast Warrior Wing Beast combo anyway. But I'm just going to use this to draw two, maybe draw into some more non engine. And here we see Kit as well as Fire King Island. This is actually pretty cool because uh, getting the Fire King Island here actually lets us play through yet another uh, negate here. 
So if they have like an imperm or something like that, we're actually perfectly fine. So we can go ahead and like normal summon the Ponix. If they have an imperm or something because they're weird and they imperm Ponix, ignoring the fact that Kieran and Circle exist, we can easily just activate Fire King Island, use the effect to pop the Tri Brigade kit, and search for the Sacred Garunix here. Let me find him real quick. Adding the Garunix, triggering Chainlink 1 kit, Chainlink 2 Garunix, special and dump, and then Chainlink 1 Nerval, Chainlink 2 Garunix, using it to pop a Barong if I can find it, and using the Nerval to add honestly anything we really want. We could add Karis, but I think that would actually be a waste of a Karis because we can't even optionally use the effect. So I'm just going to add another copy of Fractal. Now I am going to commit a cardinal sin here, uh, no bird pun intended either, but I'm going to link off the Garunix and the Ponix instead of destroying the Ponix in order to go into a Tri-Brigade Farajit. This will allow me to trigger the effect of Farajit to specialty Fractal to the side of the field. And then we can use the Fractal to banish any number we want, really. We actually do have more than enough resources, especially if we use the non-destroyed Ponix, to go for a Shurig line, and then use the Shurig line to grab, like, the, uh, we go with, like, Bear Brum, use the Shurig to grab a Hand Trap or something, and then go into Apo and stuff like that. Or we can play it a little bit safer. Overall, I'd say the best bet would be to play it safe and just banish, like, the Kit and the Nerval. Go into the Bear Brum, and then use the Bear Brum Farajit and Fractal for an Appaloosa. Use the uh, Bear Brum to search for a Revolt, putting back the Triple Tack, and, you know, we can all have a Merry Christmas. But, if you really want to extend and see what this deck can really do at its max potential, you can actually go for the 4. Let's go ahead and do Kit and Nerval, as well as Ponix and Fractal here. And we can Banish to summon our Shurig. Then we can turn the Fractal and the Shurig into our Bear Brum. Triggering the effect of Shurig in order to search for any 4 or lower. Um, I don't think it matters too much here. I think I'm just going to grab a DD Crow, honestly, I might as well. I'm then going to use the effect of Bear Brim here, discarding probably the DD Crow to put a thing in Grave. And then probably Ghost Bell, honestly, because Ghost Bell is not a great top deck later on. In order to special back probably the kit keep in mind you can also special the ponix if you really want to for some reason but like that's only really good in a grind game for example we're gonna summon back our kit and we're gonna use the effect of kit banishing the dd crow and the fractal in order to summon an ancient warriors double dragon lords it's really funny because in like all the other tri brigade variants this card's like a staple end board piece but in this deck you actually prefer to go into ip which i think is pretty funny and then finally we're going to take our Fairjit, our bear brum and our kit here to go into an Appaloosa, and then use the effect of Bear Brum to search for our Revolt. Super easy to find now that it's a quarter century rare. Uh, and then put the talents back on the bottom. Like I said, this is technically like the max end board for this hand. Uh, instead of like the IP, you get like the double dragon lords and stuff. But honestly, you don't really get as much follow up. And you do miss out on the ghost bell or the follow up talents in order to get a double dragon lords instead. So, like I said, honestly, I'd probably rather just go for the Apple Revolt line before, keeping the Ghost Bell in hand, putting the Talents back on the bottom for the Revolt. But, like I said, if you really wanted to extend, or you know, like, a Bounce is really good against your matchup or something, you can go for the Apple for 3, Revolt, and Double Dragon Lords. You're getting follow-up anyway, because you do have Island, as well as Revolt here, and you do have Sacred Garunix live in Grave, in case it comes up at some point. Plus, now that I think about it, we do actually have the Barong that we popped. I completely forgot about that. So, we do actually get to use the Barong here to search. So we can search for like a follow-up Ponix or something, so there actually is a bit more follow-up than I thought. But overall, again, I still think it's not really super worth it when you could just commit to a smaller and more consistent board. And that is going to do it for my Fire Brigade test hands. This was really fun to actually go through. Like I said, I do test hands all the time, but it's really fun actually sitting down on camera and showing off all the different little things you can do, including the mistakes sometimes when you want to like rewind. And while I don't claim to be like the best Fire Brigade player, Bird Up is more so my thing. I am really proud of my ability with the Tri Brigade stuff, and I'm really hoping that this can help someone out out there. But with that being said, that's going to do it for the video. If you liked it, please sure to leave a like as I'll put this video and the channel into the YouTube recommended. And if you like this content or if you want to like it, like more test hands, be sure to let me know in the comments below, but also be sure to subscribe and turn on notifications if you haven't already, because it supports the channel more than anything else, and it's absolutely free. Plus, we're trying to hit 10,000 subscribers by the end of 2024. Also, if you want to support me directly while getting some awesome TCG merchandise in the process, check out Tapio cards in the link down below. Use code Aurora5 for 5% off your purchase at checkout and to support me financially. Once again, thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. This is Aurora, signing off. Stop, stop.